Good morning. My name is Tihana Bicinic and I'm a consultant in infectious diseases at the Centre for Global Health at St George's University of London and St George's Hospital in London. I'm going to talk to you today about the pathogenesis of cryptococcal meningitis in HIV and the two aims of this short talk are to understand the pathogenesis and also be aware of the host immune response to cryptococcus. So cryptococcus is an environmental fungus. It's present in the environment as part of either soil associated with tree bark, including certain species of bush and mopana tree in southern Africa, as well as associated with bird poo. And we are all exposed to this fungus by inhaling it into the lungs. As you can see from this diagram, the spores or dried yeast are inhaled into the lungs in all of us. And because in most cases, the lung infection produces no symptoms, the incubation period for the infection is unknown. The initial infection usually produces no symptoms. In a minority of cases, it can produce symptoms of a pneumonia. In most cases, however, the pathogen stays in the lungs within the alveoli or the lymph nodes of the lungs and enters a period known as latent infection, whereby we are infected, however, there are no symptoms of disease. We know that exposure and infection is very common in adults from studies in the United States done looking at antibodies throughout life and showing that the vast majority of adults have antibodies to cryptococcus. Disease is usually either primary, that means the exposure was recent and the patient develops an infection, usually in the setting of a compromised immune system, or it can be after sometimes a period of latency which can go on for years or even decades, a reactivation of infection. And most evidence supports this latter uh, phenomenon. What happens is that the organism then enters the bloodstream and is disseminated via the bloodstream throughout the body to all organs, but it has a particular predilection for the brain where it causes this disease, a meningoencephalitis. However, it can present with disease at other sites, notably the skin, where it can produce a range of different types of skin lesions from nodules to papules and ulcers, as well as the prostate gland, which is a sanctuary site for this infection, and bones. And importantly to note, even when there is lung infection or lung disease, there is no onward transmission of this infection. In terms of the human immune response to this infection, it involves arms of both the innate and adaptive immune system. The first cell, pictured here, showing a scanning electron micrograph of an alveolar macrophage with little spherical cryptococci attached to it, the first cell that's encountered is the macrophage deep inside the lung in the alveoli. The cryptococcus is opsonized with antibody and complement from the humoral immune response and then is phagocytosed. And like many intracellular pathogens, cryptococcus has adapted to survive and even replicate in macrophages, the very cell that's meant to destroy it. To help destroy cryptococcus within the macrophage, um, there is an interaction between the macrophage and the CD4 positive T cells, so-called T helper cells which, as we know, are profoundly low in advanced HIV. The macrophage is activated by the secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines, so-called Th1 cytokines, including, very importantly, a cytokine called interferon gamma. And this response induces a pathological lesion shown here in the diagram known as a granuloma, which is a mixture of lymphocytes and macrophages with internalized fungus. Usually, and this is a very similar response pathologically to tuberculosis and sometimes difficult to distinguish, if this response is good, in other words, if a person has good cell-mediated immunity, the infection is walled off, producing these nodules or lesions called cryptococomas, which can occur both in the lung and in the brain. 
and the organism will be predominantly inside the cells. However, in advanced HIV, where, as I have alluded to above, there is very little T helper cell, the infection is not contained and becomes disseminated with the organism predominantly extracellularly, certainly in brain lesions when they've been looked at on autopsy. I mentioned already that cryptococci have adapted, partly through their capsule and also through having a melanin pigment in their cell walls, to survive and replicate and even be trans transported from one macrophage to another. We also think that the macrophage within the bloodstream is one of the vehicles of dissemination whereby the cryptococci inside the macrophage can be trafficked by the bloodstream through the blood-brain barrier into the brain to establish infection. So in summary, cryptococcus is an environmental fungus that we are all exposed to through inhaling into the lungs. In most cases, the infection is contained, and this is due to both the innate and adaptive arms of the immune system. However, in patients who are immunocompromised, particularly advanced HIV with a CD4 count less than 100, dissemination by the bloodstream occurs into many organs, but the most frequent site of infection is the brain. Thank you.